Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give Him praise this morning. Oh, He deserves all the praise. Do you find your trust in only Him? Come on. Do you find your trust in only Him? Even though the seas are raging, come on, He'll speak and calm them. I love the phrase in there, no one can add to your protection. You see, David... Perfection. Perfection. No, he's perfect in every way. It doesn't matter. And, and he is the one that we put all of our trust in. All of our trust in. But I'm going to go with it anyway. No one can add to his protection. That's right. I like it. Come on. Add it. David, listen, David counted the men. Yeah, Lord, I trust in you. But let me see if I have an advantage in the flesh. Come on. I trust in you, but let me see if I have help over here. It doesn't matter what you have. He is in control. Come on, give him praise. Amen. Good to have you here at the light. Welcome. That's good. They can add that to the song. Yeah, they can go change it. Go change it. It needs to be changed. God's so good. It's so good to see all of you in the house of the Lord this morning. Isn't it good? You know what our world needs? is hope mm. and guess what you're the bearers of that hope amen am i ringing am i okay first peter 3 15 Whoop. okay we're good we're good because we have hope right first peter 3 15 it says but sanctify that word there sanctify means consecrate dedicate yourselves your hearts to the lord right And it says to be able to always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is within you. Now more than ever, share your faith. Share your testimony. Learn the scriptures. Why do you believe what you believe? Do you even know? That's called apologetics. Guess what? On Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. in here, we have a six spiritual disciplines class that goes on, teaches you about why we pray, why we worship. Come be a part of that if you're not doing anything on Wednesdays at 7. But God wants you to grow. He wants you to learn because the hope that's within us has to get out to the world so that they will come to a saving knowledge of him. I'm so glad you're here today. It shows that you have hope and that you're ready to grow in Christ. We love you so much. God bless. Amen. That's a good word. Hey, and I believe this, you're going to leave here with more hope than you came in. Amen. Listen, as you find your seat, tell someone it's going to be the best Sunday ever. Good morning, Light family and all the guests. Welcome this morning. It is now time for our tithes and our offering. You know, I was just thinking about this morning how we were singing these songs You know, and and are we doing lip service to the songs, or are we actually giving our heart to the Lord when we're singing these songs? I have to to put a check on myself, too. Am I just singing this, or am I really meaning it? That's where faith comes in, right? There are lots of ways to give to the Light Church. There are two boxes at the back of the building right here in the sanctuary. You can drop your tithe and offering in there. And also, out in the lobby, you can use the kiosk online. You can also drop them. There's two boxes out there in the lobby. So we provide all sorts of ways for you to give. But, you know, I just was thinking this morning of how giving is relational. Giving to God is relational. Everything about God is relational. And I remember when I started tithing, I was 18 years old. I just passed the 66 book club. (laughs) I got my certificate for 23rd Psalm, and I was baptized. You know, At 15 and a half years old, I didn't understand anything. And so by the time I was 18, I wasn't raised in a Christian family, but I began to give out of obligation, out of a religious heart. I didn't understand. And then I walked away from Jesus for 17 and a half years, but when I came back, I had a relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. And when I began to give, my heart was in it. And our heart has to be in it. That's all God asks. He wants our heart, right? The last book in the Old Testament, Malachi, it says to bring your tithe into the storehouse so there'll be plenty for everyone. Where's your storehouse? That's where you go to church. That's where you sow into the vision that God has given to Pastor Ron and Pastor Ava. 
So as we give today, I want you to think about the song that we just sang. Are you available? Are you available to God in all aspects? Are you sold out in all ways, even the pocketbook? Father, we bless you this morning. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for what you're going to do today. Thank you for what you've already done and what you've already planned. Touch our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Light family. We're so glad you chose to spend part of your week here with us. We want to take a moment to update you on all that's happening here at The Light. No matter where we are on our spiritual walk, we all have next steps to take and a deeper life to live. So join us this Wednesday for deeper life classes at 7 p.m. In the FLC, we'll have two classes, the six spiritual disciplines and hashtag marriage goals. In the SLC, we'll continue the Wednesday night Bible study. The Christian life is more than songs and a sermon. We believe that God has called each and every one of us to a deeper life. At The Light, our heart is to walk alongside and equip those who are ready to pursue that deeper life. Our Kids Light and Light Youth will have services concurrent with all classes. If you're a new believer, please join us this first Sunday of the month for our New Believers class. Come discover what following Jesus really means. Also, if you're ready to be a part of all that God is doing here at The Light, you're invited to join our new members class on the second Sunday of the month. So come find out more about us and become a member. Both of our Next Step classes take place at 9.30 a.m. You can sign up online today. If you're a young adult, we want to personally invite you to come hang out Monday nights at 7 p.m. Come make new friends and dive deeper into God's Word with us. If this is your first time here, we hope you'll make the light your church home. Be sure to fill out the Connect card from the seat back in front of you and drop it off at the Connect Center. You'll receive a free gift and have the opportunity to ask any questions that you may have. To stay up to date with everything that's going on here at The Light, you can sign up for any classes and events if you go to thelightcf.org. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We love you, Light family. Have a great week. Good morning. Give him praise. He's a good God. Worthy of praise, turn over to Daniel chapter 6. We're going to continue the series we've been on for this being the sixth week. And today's title of Trial by Fire is The Trial of the Lion's Den. And just to let you know, we're going to be on this series two more weeks. It's going to be a total of an eight-week series. It's usually the max series I do is eight weeks because you lose interest after that. But uh, how many of you have been getting something out of this series? Come on, because we've been in trials and we're going to continue to be, but we'll be on this for two more weeks. And after that, Ava and I are going to take a break. We have a 36-year anniversary coming up. Yeah. She has put up with me for a long time, so we'll be out a couple of weeks. Pastor Steve and Pastor Ryan will stand up here and deliver the word for you while we are out. But listen, after that, on August the 23rd, uh, mark that on your calendars. I'm going to begin a new series, and I've, ent I've titled it Signs of the Times. And listen, there's a lot of questions people have right now. You know, where are we at? The disciples ask Jesus. People ask Jesus, you know, when is the end of this age? Where are we at? Listen, how many of you are seeing things on the internet? Come on, all kinds of stuff out there. But let me just tell you this. The Bible is the good news. Come on, so give God praise. It's the good news. It's the good news. And, you know, I've always said it. We don't know when we're closer today. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think there's some things out there that will cause people to have fear. And I think, you know, Ava mentioned it today. Today, we need to know the Bible. We need to know where we're at. Are we there yet? Come on. Where we're at. So we're going to be talking about that. But, you know, just a, a, a little bit about that. The Bible tells us some things. And, and Jesus said this, don't be deceived. People are going to come and say uh, they're Christ coming in his name. He says, don't be deceived. He goes on to say there's going to be wars, rumors. Listen, rumors of wars and wars. But he also says this, don't be troubled. Come on now. Don't be troubled. Listen, if you're a believer, we're living in exciting times. And it says, don't be troubled. And, and also, it says it's the beginning of sorrows. And listen, I know for years before my time that, you know, the Bible talks about birth pains. As a woman having a baby, and, and uh, I don't know what the big deal is, but I hear it's painful. <laughs> 
But, you know, birth pains, that when contractions begin, they're kind of subtle and spaced out. Then they become more severe and closer together. And as I see over the, the years and, and where we're at, there, there's been birth pains in this world. And, but, you, you know, that good things come. So where are we? And, and here's something the Bible says about the end times. It will be like the days of Noah. And listen to what it says. There will be people eating Drinking, marrying, giving and marrying. In other words, they're going to be living life as normal. As normal. Listen, I know things are going to get bad, but here's what I believe. I believe when things get really bad, we're not going to live through the wrath of God. And listen, I'm not saying Jesus is coming back tomorrow. I don't know when. I'm going to live like he's coming back today, but I'm, going to, I'm also going to shine my light like, like there's people to be reached in the kingdom of God. Come on. Come on. But we're under some pressure, so we're going to be talking about that, and I believe the church is going to, according to the Bible, escape the wrath of God. Give him praise. Come on. But the main thing is not to have cause for fear. John 16, 33 says, in this world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. Not the tribulation, but tribulations. And, and scripture says, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your word today. Father, I pray that you speak to our hearts. Give us peace. Give us comfort. Father, help us to know how to, to walk through, live through the challenges and trials that we face, Father, with joy, with strength. Father, help us to, to hear what you want us to hear today, and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said. That gives me time to take a drink of water when you say amen. So. So trial by fire, and, and we've talked about this, the meaning is this, the test of one's ability to perform under pressure. Yes, we're going to feel some pressure. Daniel in the lion's den, he had some pressure, not just before the lion's den, I mean in the lion's den, but even before the lion's den. There was a trial that he faced, and he performed well under pressure in the lion's den. And, you know, we've all had experience with pressure in this life. We've gone through some things. There's all kinds of pressure. I was thinking about this in some of the most challenging times in my life. I mean, there's been some uh, spiritual challenging times. I was just thinking about, it just popped in my head uh, when I was in the fire department. There's a uh, pressure of going into house fires. But I remember one of the most challenging things that I had to face was as a, as a paramedic recertifying under ALS cardiac guidelines. You had to learn algorithms and you had to go into this room where there was a mannequin that was attached to a machine and they would give you a scenario, a doctor and somebody else in there and you were on your own to kill this mannequin or help it live. <laughs> and I remember just the pressure and you had to perform well under pressure. So we go through tests of courage, tests of knowledge and just last night I had a test. Last night, I'm in bed, and you know, when you lay down to go to bed, you're ready, the day's done, you're ready to catch some Z's. So I laid down in bed, and Ava was in the garage, or she was in the house, and I heard her go, Ronnie, 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 come here, come here, kill it. I'm like, oh man, what is going on? I wasn't ready for this challenge and pressure. I said, what is it? She says, there's a big, giant cockroach. Well, those big, the, the man-eating kind, the, the one that is cause for alarm. I guess they all are, some people, but, you know, so she's saying, Ronnie, come here, kill it. So I'm like, where is it? She goes, it's in the garage. I'm thinking, the garage? He can have the garage. The garage is his domain. You know, I'm not going in the garage. I'm in bed. But it's, no, you have to kill it now or it's going to come in the house with all of its friends and we're not going to make it through the night. <laughs> you know how it goes. So me, I go out there to the garage and I say, where is it? She goes, it's somewhere in there by the dog food. I, now I have to find it. Listen, guys, I just jumped out of bed. I have no shirt, no shoes. I had something on, but no shirt, no shoes. I'm not prepared for this. So I'm looking for him. There was this fly swatter hanging right there. I'm saying, great, I got a weapon. So, you know, they, they don't, these don't bother me. But for the sake of Ava, you know, so I, and then I see it. Da -da. It's there. I move the, the bag, and it's there, and it's staring at me, and I'm staring at it. 
I couldn't get to it, so I had to move something else. But when I moved something else, it flew. It's something about it when they fly directly at you. <laughs> A test of my manhood. <laughs> Nobody was there but me and him. So I'm not going to tell you what I did. But I lived and he didn't. Come on. I passed the test under pressure. I saved my wife again. You know, you know, we can laugh at that. And the things, you know, even some of the challenges that we do go through are not as severe as some we can go through or others have gone through. But listen to this. Every day we're in a real life trial by fire that tests our faith. And we're going to see more that tests our faith and, and pressure is increasing, persecution of Christians, culture pressure, uh, pressure to conform and abandon godly values. How will we perform under increasing pressure? Listen to this. You know, I say we're in a lion's den every day. First Peter 5, 8 says this, be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Listen, we are the resistance Come on, not, not, not passive, but resist aggressively, steadfast in the faith, knowing that, that the same suffering, listen to this, it's not unique, are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, right? But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, everybody say strengthen, Listen, there's going to be a strengthening and settle you. Let's walk in strength and calmness. Come on. No matter what we face. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Give him praise for his word. James 1, 2 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Count it. All. Listen, I read that and I go, Really? Really? Is that a misprint? No. Count it all joy when you go through trials because it's, it's working on you. It's perfecting you. It's doing something in you. It's building strength in you when we endure through the challenges that we face. So count it all joy. Lord, you're, Lord, you're doing something in me. You're doing something in the body of Christ. If you believe that, give him praise this morning. <laughs> Daniel was under pressure of the culture of the Babylonians, but he purpose, remember, he purposed in his heart not to defile himself. He, Daniel performed well under pressure. And how did he continue to perform well, and how can we perform well? So look at Daniel 6, verse 1. It says this, It pleased Darius, the king there, to set over the kingdom 120 sirtraps. These were like local uh, mayors, if you will, city managers, if you will, to be over the whole kingdom. So 120 of these managers and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one. Daniel had favor that the sirtraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and sirtraps, listen to this, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So here's Daniel, set as one of the, one of the governors over all these city managers or sirtraps and to give an account to him, but Daniel distinguished himself above all the others because he had an excellent spirit in him, and the king was looking to promote him because of it. So three things I want to point out that Daniel did to overcome the, the trials that he faced, the lion's den, and, and the challenges that he faced that put him there, and we can do the same thing. Number one is this, have the right attitude. Have the right attitude. Attitude, you've heard, determines your altitude. And how about this, disposition will affect your position. Disposition, attitude, they're important. So Daniel, it says an excellent spirit in him. <clears throat> The word spirit is the word wind, and it, it means emotion or character. He had good character. He had good, a good spirit about him. He had a good disposition. And I think about that. Lord, help me no matter what I go through, what challenges I face, help me to have a good, to, good disposition, a good attitude, a good heart towards things. 
An attitude defined as a settled way of thinking. It's, it's a settled way of thinking that is reflected in your behavior. Listen, if you have a settled way of thinking that, listen, God is always in control, it will affect your behavior, right? If you believe that he has your best interest in mind, it will affect the things you say, the things you think, the, the things you do, because you have a settled way of thinking, a good spirit in you. I believe Daniel had this spirit in him that no matter what, God was taking care of him as long as he's continued to serve God. So and I thought about this under pressure and the trials we face. What comes out of us when we're squeezed? Come on. What comes out of you when you're squeezed, when we're under, under we, we react differently to pressure. Sometimes we get angry, we, get, we go into depression, we just freeze, we can't function. We, func we, we, we react differently to pressure, so what comes out? Do you shut down? Do you lash out? Do you have fear? Do you have faith? What comes out? I love 2 Corinthians 2.14. It says, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Did y'all get that? Always. If you have that attitude, you'll do well. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Listen to this. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ. Ava talked about it today. Let's let the fragrance of Christ come out of us even when we're under pressure. Among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. It's important what comes out of you when we're squeezed and we're under pressure. Have the right attitude. And if, I, if I'm being honest with the things that we've gone through recently and just uh, some uncertainty in, in, in this world, but there's always certainty with God. You know, I, I found myself at times being a little angry. Anybody been a little angry? Come on. Being a, I'm just being honest. Being a little angry, being a little concerned. I've had to ask God to help me in these things, and I've had to be like Daniel, purpose in my heart to, to focus on the right things, to have the right attitude. I mean, we have to uh, get God's word in us. We have to talk to ourselves, sing psalms and hymns to ourselves, amen, to keep our emotions in check. And, and so I, I thought about this, and Daniel, why was his attitude so good or a good spirit in him? He was taken from his home. He served a foreign king. So he really was in a position, if anybody wanted to have a bad attitude, you know, he was someone that we, we would give him a pass maybe. You know, you, know, you had a bad break, you know. But he had God's favor. I believe that's because he had faith in God and he had a good attitude regardless of what situation he found him in. And I believe he purposed in his heart, we know from scripture, not to defile himself. And I believe he, how about this, perhaps he just worked as unto the Lord no matter what he found, position he found himself in. Come on, that'll, that'll get you a long ways. Just serve as unto the Lord. Have a good attitude. David in Psalm 51.10, listen, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit. Lord, create in us a, a, a clean heart and a steadfast spirit. A steadfast, it means to be fixed in the right direction. Father, let our spirit be fixed in the right direction towards you, towards your goodness, towards your purpose for us. It's the same as an attitude, a settled way of thinking that reflects in, in our behavior. An excellent spirit was in him. He had a good attitude, joyful, faithful, loyal, honest, fair, pure. You see, all these things. His attitude caused him to be promoted. So I think about these things under pressure. I think of uh, Nehemiah and Ezra in rebuilding the temple. They were under pressure and, and, and from, from the, those around that didn't want them to succeed. How many of you know the enemy does not want the church to succeed? But we've said it before. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Come on. So Ezra stands up and reads to the people. He reads the word of God. Ezra in Nehemiah reads to the people. And it says this in 8.10. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to the Lord. And he says this, do not sorrow. Look at somebody say, do not sorrow. And he says this, and we know this, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And when I think about, as I mentioned, you know, my, my attitude lately, I've had to say, Lord, help me to have the right attitude about this or about that and focus on the right things. Listen, the enemy tries to steal your joy. He tries to steal your joy. Joy and strength, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Listen, you want to get strong? Start reading the word. Read about God. Come on. Let it strengthen. Listen, joy and strength work together in tandem. 
It's kind of like anybody ever ridden a tandem bicycle? Two seats, two pedals, right? You know, if you do that, the idea is that two people are pedaling. You don't want to get on there and pedal and you got dead weight on the back. Come on, you know. Hey, you better pedal, you know. Because what will happen if I'm doing all the pedaling and somebody on the back is not pedaling, guess what's going to happen to me? I'm going to become weary and tired. Listen, if I, the joy of the Lord is my strength. If you don't have joy, you will lose your strength. Come on. The enemy wants to steal our joy so that he can uh, make us become ineffective because we have no strength and we shut down. Let's maintain our joy by letting God be our strength. Come on, give him praise. Let him be our strength. You know, David was under pressure. We see this in 1 Samuel 30. He and his men came back from war. They came home to Ziklag fighting. The Amalekites had attacked their their home, their village, their families, their property, their stuff, and took all their stuff, kidnapped their family. Now, Now, think about this. You're at war, and you're all coming back from fighting, and you come back to your home after you're tired and drained, and you discover that your enemy has come and burned down your home and taken your stuff and kidnapped your family. David and his men were weary, they were tired, they were under distress to the point where they wanted to stone David. It's your fault, David. So can you imagine being in David's shoes at this point? Verse 6, 1 Samuel 36, now David was greatly distressed. Well, I guess so, I'll give him a pass, come on, you know? For the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But listen to this. Listen to this. Listen, let me just ask you this. Have you ever been under distress? Come on. Two or three of you, four maybe, you know. Some of you are thinking about it. We've all been under distress. Well, we can compare notes and see who's got the biggest distress, but we've all been there, right? I mean, just think about it. Your worst time. So this may have been one of his worst times here. But David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Listen, there's so much there because what I see there is, first of all, we have to make sure that we strengthen ourselves. Come on. If we're waiting on somebody else to do it, we might wait a long time. How did he strengthen himself? I don't know. Perhaps he sang to himself like he had done before. Perhaps he just started singing about the goodness of God, and that caused him not to focus on the situation at hand, but strengthening himself, thinking about who God is, taking himself uh, from the challenge he's in, from the den that he's in, to the, the place where God is, and strengthening himself in that moment. Well, you may think, well, I don't feel like it. I don't either sometimes. I don't know that he felt like it, but maybe he knew that if he lost his joy, he would have no strength. Maybe he reminded himself of all the times that God had delivered him before. How are you going to strengthen yourself? I don't know. Get into God's word and find out he's bigger than the challenges that you face. He's bigger than the challenges we we face. He's brought you through before. He can bring you through again. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. It'll it'll bring the the right attitude back. I'm going to give you a moment to give him praise. Come on. If we're going to do well under pressure, we've got to maintain the right attitude, keep our heart fixed in the right direction, strengthen ourselves, not allowing the enemy to, to take our joy. Second thing we can do is this, let's stay loyal to God. Stay loyal. Daniel was loyal. When things go bad, listen, Satan tempts us to be disloyal. Remember Job? Remember Job? Satan wanted to, to tempt Job and God gave him permission, and then he's, he t- causes his, him to lose his family, his property, his livestock, all these things under distress, under pressure. And he, 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 but he remained loyal under pressure after all this loss. And in Job 2 9, it says, Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Just stop there a minute. 
Notice what she says. Do you still hold fast? I got a feeling she's been in his ear before. Come on. You know, you need to just give up. Listen, I believe the enemy tempts us that way when things get bad in our lives. Just give up. What's the point? It doesn't do any good to pray anymore. I've prayed. I've done that. And look what's happening to me. I don't understand. Look what's happening over there. Why, why has nothing happened to them bad like it's happened to me? We can have all these reasons, all these excuses, but Job refused to be disloyal to God. Even with somebody telling him, go ahead, go ahead, you have every right. Look, look what you've lost. Go ahead and curse God and die, you know? Do you still hold fast to your integrity? And he's talking about the relationship with God. Curse God and die. But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. As one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept God, good from God, and shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. He remained loyal, as did Daniel, remained loyal to all the... The governors, the sir traps, they were jealous of Daniel. Remember, the, the king wanted to pr promote him because he had an excellent spirit in him. him. He's a foreigner. He's a Hebrew. In, in other words, he's a believer. He's a Christian. Or here, you know, before Christ, he's a, he's a believer in God. They couldn't find any fault in him, so they attacked his faith. The Babylonians knew that Daniel was loyal to God. In verse 5... Daniel 6, 5 says, then these men said, we shall not find any fault against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So they went to the king and convinced him to make a decree, a royal decree, a statute that said no one, listen to this very carefully, no one can petition any other God except you, O king, for 30 days. In other words, they convinced him to make an executive order that no one can go to their God, come on, for 30 days, and if they do, they're going to be thrown into a lion's den. And listen, the king, he, he loved Daniel, but he wasn't thinking. He's thinking, that's a good idea. Look, there's some selfishness. There's some pride in there. We talked about the trial of pride. There's some pride in there. That's a great idea. Nobody can say anything to anybody but me for 30 days. If they do, they'll be, that's good with me. So they made a decree, an executive order. And he signed the decree. Daniel 6.10. Now, when Daniel... Listen, listen to this very carefully. When Daniel knew that the writing was signed... In other words, it's, been, it's an effect. He went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem... He didn't go pull the shades down. Come on. Come on. Are you with me? I'm going to pull the shades down because I'm not supposed to be doing this. No. He opened his windows to... Come on. He opened towards Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since the early days. He didn't change a thing. He remained loyal to God. Give him praise. Come on. He remained loyal. So even under pressure not to be loyal, he stayed loyal. He opened his windows and prayed and gave thanks just like he always did. If we're going to do well under pressure, let's have the right attitude and let's stay loyal to God. And number three is this. Let's trust God in the den, in the trial, in the lion's den. Let's trust him. Daniel trusted him. In other words, have faith in God even in the midst of the trial that you're going through. So this was reported to the king that Daniel was still doing what he did all the time to, with his God. The king, and they, they, they came, and the king was upset. He goes, oh, no, because he, he loved Daniel. He wasn't thinking. They tricked him into this. And so he's like, he's trying, he's trying to reverse this decree. And they're like, no, 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 king. The law is the law. You wrote it. You signed it. Daniel has to go to the den. And the king knew that he had been tricked, and he, he was distraught over this thing that he had to do. But the law is the law, they told him. Verse 16, so the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, listen, your God whom you serve continually will deliver you. Remember what Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego said when they were uh, uh, threatened to throw them into the fiery furnace? Our God will deliver us. Come on. And even if he doesn't, we will not bow to you, O king. They are going to be loyal to God. Give him praise. Come on. So King Darius knew it, your God whom you serve continually, faithfully, loyally, he will deliver you. 
Then a stone was brought and laid in the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of the lords that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. It was done. It was sealed. It was a long night for the king. He was concerned about his friend Daniel, and he didn't sleep. And the next morning, he goes and he cries out, Oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, whom you serve continually, has your God been able to deliver you? He's crying out to Daniel, and listen, if Daniel's there... Listen to verse 21. Then Daniel said to the king, come on, this is going to get you excited here. O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatever was found on him because he believed in his God. Come on. What an encouraging word. And listen to this, uh, you remember, remember um, the first thing Daniel did whenever they were uh, supposed to bow down, and Daniel, he goes and he, he, he prays, he had to figure out the dream that um, uh, the king had Nebuchadnezzar, remember? The first thing he did was go to God, why? Because he realized he was in a spiritual battle. And it required spiritual warfare. But can I tell you right now, we're, we, as we talked about before, we're in a spiritual battle. But can I tell you this, when we cry out to our God, because we believe in him, he will dispatch angels on our behalf. Come on. On our behalf. Angels sit and they will shut the mouths of the lions. Anything that wants to devour and destroy you. They're roaring around seeking whom he may devour. No, you may not because my God will protect me and deliver me. Give him praise. Have not hurt me, he says. Because I'm innocent. And, you know, I, I thought about this. And I th- listen, here's something I've, I've told people before. If we do the right thing, I believe the right thing will happen to us and for us. Daniel continued to do the right thing and he walked in God's favor. Look at Joseph. As Joseph in his journey, he always did the right thing in God's favor and blessing followed him. It doesn't mean we're not going to have trying times as Joseph did and obviously Daniel did. But, the, but God will work on our behalf when we do the right thing. You ever notice somebody with a guilty conscience, something happens, they're like, what? Who, somebody after me, what? <laughs> no, when we do the right thing, we don't have to be afraid. Come on. Walk in fear. Trust, listen, I love this too. Trust in the blood of Jesus on your life as a believer. Come on. Yeah, yeah, come on. Trust in the blood of Jesus as a believer. Come on. He protects us. No harm. Trust God in the den. No injury, whatever was found on him because he believed in God, just like the furnace. So trial of the lion's den, we all all face that. Have the right attitude, stay loyal, and trust God in the den. Amen. Give him praise as you stand with me. (laughs) Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Father, I pray that you give us strength. Father, that the enemy is not allowed to steal our joy, Father, because we trust in you. So, Father, we just thank you for that. Father, I pray that you help us, like Daniel, to have the right attitude. Put, let us have a good spirit in us, Father. <clears throat> Stay loyal to trust God in the din, no matter what we face, Lord. We trust you. Your hand is on us, Father. Father, let the fragrance of Christ come out when we're under, under pressure. We thank you for that, Father. Father, that you are a good God and you, you're, our best interest is in your heart, Father. We thank you for that. Father, we thank you that we can be secure and at peace as Daniel was, Father. That you shut the mouths of the lions, the enemy, Satan, that tries to devour us, Father. But we thank you for your, that we can have faith in you and your protection, Father. So, Father, as we go out here from here today, Father, let us go out with joy and strength. Let us continue to strengthen ourselves in you, Father. 
We thank you for that. Every eye closed, every head bowed. You know, there is hope, as Ava mentioned when we started the service today. There's hope in him. And I don't know everybody that came in what your disposition is, where you're at in your faith, your walk with him. But let me just say this. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, Pastor Mark talked about a relationship. You need to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. God loves you so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And if you believe that, Scripture tells us in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we believe that in our heart and it comes out of our mouth, we confess it with our mouth, we're saved, we're born again, we're his child. If you're here this morning and you'd say, you know, I I really believe in God, but I've never accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but I want to do that today. I don't want another day to go by with doubt in my heart or confusion about where I am, I want to know where I stand in my relationship with God. It's simple. If you believe in God and that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, in your heart and make that confession, you will be spiritually transferred from here to eternity in the family of God. Or maybe you've just let your relationship dwindle and you've walked away from God and you say, you know what, I need to come back into a right relationship with God. I love the story of the prodigal son that walked away, but when he came back, not even expecting to be brought right back into the the full status of family, but God ran to him with open arms as he will you as well. So if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor Ron, would you pray for me? I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, or I want to come back into a right relationship with him. I want to pray for you right where you are. All I need you to do is just lift up a hand so I can see, and I want to just join in prayer with you for where you are in your relationship. Say, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. If you you just acknowledge that with an uplifted hand, I'm going to pray for you right right here, right now, before we go. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. I don't want to miss anybody. I'm looking. I'm going to pray in just a minute. Anyone else? Say, that's me. Let's all say this prayer together. Say, Father God. I believe with all my heart that you exist, that you love me, that you love me so much that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me. I take you at your word that says, if I believe that in my heart and confess it with my mouth, I'll be saved. I'll spend eternity with you. And I thank you that right now, I'm your child. I'm forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, Scripture says that when just one is lost, when one comes into the fold, that all of heaven rejoices, and we rejoice with heaven. We rejoice with heaven. Listen, Pastor Mark's going to come and close, and we're going to have some prayer partners up here. If you said that prayer, come let them know. Let somebody know at the info desk. We want to continue to pray for you. Give him praise again. What a powerful sermon. Hello? Oh, hey, everybody's down here for the prayer team. These guys are prayed up. They've been praying. They've been waiting. They're excited. If you've got something that you brought in this morning with you, don't leave with it. We always say that. Just don't bring something in and leave with it. If you need prayer for your family members that you want to come to Jesus, these guys are ready. These guys are ready. For those of you in here that raised your hand to receive Christ this morning, you can respond to 31996 Born Again on your phone. Or you can come up here and tell one of these folks and they can agree with you for your next journey. Father, we bless you this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the gospel that's good news that went out this morning, God. We praise you and we honor you this morning in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Have a great week. Love you guys.